Hi everyone, welcome back to another art session. It's me, Marcy. It's good to see you guys again. So, Happy New Year. Obviously, I know it's been about a week or so since we've been into the new year. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday and for a wonderful and healthy and prosperous, wonderful new year to come. Today, guys, we're going to do something a little different. So our last video, we started to incorporate some enamel paints and we started to touch base on some different kinds of painting techniques and things like that. Today, I wanted to show you these cute little guys. So this is a little bit more of, I guess, a paint series than doing dotting. I have painted for a very long time, probably almost 30 years I've been painting. And I, I paint landscapes and I'm, you know, very much influenced by Bob Ross and his landscapes. And I love doing landscape painting, mostly with oils, but I do lots of uh, acrylics as well. And so I somehow wanted to incorporate just basic painting into my videos as well and teach you about painting. I feel like it's important when you're learning all aspects of painting and dotting and whatever it is that you are learning. So today I thought it would be really cute to make these little mushrooms. So these, if you haven't noticed, uh, mushrooms are a big staple right now. Everybody loves the mushrooms, right? I've always been drawn to mushrooms. I love them regardless. I love when I go on my hikes and I can see them out in the nature. They inspire me, the colors, the shapes, you name it. So I thought it would be really cool to make some little tiny mushrooms, whether they can be tree ornaments or we can string all of these in a row and make some kind of garland. You can hang them with your plants. You could do a whole bunch of different things or just have these tiny little ones for little knickknacks or sitting on your windowsill. I thought they were adorable and cute and I wanted to show you how to make them today. So they're basically just, let's see if we can zoom in so we can see it. So they're basically just little tiny wooden mushrooms. I did purchase them online, so I'm going to leave a link for everything that I have available here so you can purchase them. And obviously I try to keep in mind that, you know, we are on a budget and so I try to make sure that things aren't very, very expensive. Let's see, let's hang on one second because my camera's going a little crazy with the focus, so, okay. So we've got these adorable mushrooms. This is our red cap and we have these little tiny flowers which we will be doing our dotting with. And then we have these cute little leaves and some little berries. Some of it I kept the natural wood portion of it. I just found it to be really nice to have some natural. Okay, so we have some different types. So this is our other kind of cap to it and I did some designs on the bottom here as well. We have a burnt orange color so we have even on the bottom here and here and then these are with like a coral and a burnt orange color and then we also have this nice deep okra color with our creams and greens. So I'll show you how to do all three today I think because they're super cute and we can't go without doing all of them today. So if you're interested in doing this stay with me and let's get to it guys. So the first things we're going to need let's go through our list of the items that we need to have to get for this project in particular. So obviously the first thing you're going to need to do is purchase some of these wooden mushrooms. So if you are shopping on Amazon, you're going to find an abundance of these in particular. They may be ranging in different prices. I found these in particular. They're from a company called Pile. 
I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And they have about, I think, five different types of mushrooms within the bag itself. This is the 48 piece. It is gonna run you about $24. I know that may be steep, so they do have ones where you can buy less, okay? I think the most, um, the minimum amount is about 18 of them. But they do have smaller sizes, if you could see, and then larger ones. I think they run anywhere from three centimeters up to like four and so we have different sizes we have the ones that have the rounded cap to them so again this is just the bag of the 48 ones and there's different sizes here so i'm going to pull out maybe this mid size one because i have a smaller one here and I'm going to pull that. And then they also have some bigger ones. And we have some thinner ones. And then we have the really tiny one. So I'm going to do these two for the red. All right. And then the orange and so forth. So you're going to need your mushrooms. And then what I like to use are these little, I don't know what these are called. It's like an eye, eye, eye loophole or something. And they have an, a difference of, let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. So these all have, there's different colors to them. I think I used this one for my project. And these have like tiny little screws at the end of them, like so. And they're really easy to just push in to the top of your wooden piece so again here are some i have like this i got this this was about seven dollars for all of these you might even be able to find something like this in a non not online and maybe in your local walmart or you know even a craft store something like that so we want to get some of these as well and then I also like to use this. Now this is optional. You don't have to use it. You do need to plug it in so it's not, you know, battery powered, but it's just a tiny little um, Dremel, I guess you would call it. And it can make like a tiny little hole at the top here. And so it's much easier to get these little hooks um, because it's like a starter. So this is totally optional, but I do like to have this on hand. You could probably find this where you can make jewelry as well and things like that. I think I did find this one online. What else are we going to need? So we're going to need some dotting tools. So I'm just sticking with my basic stylus, you know, pen tools here. So I have different sizes, obviously. These are a little bit different than the ones I have been using. So I will leave a link for these in the description. I think I paid no more than $5 for these. My old ones I had were the same colors that I always use in the videos. However, when I did purchase these, the colors and sizes were way different. So unfortunately, I have to now go back and reference uh, the di the difference in colors so but we'll get to that if we do use them and I'll make sure I tell you what size is which so the next thing we're going to need are just a series of basic brushes they don't have to be the most expensive brushes on the market just make sure that you have some sort of you know small detail brushes so I like to just use a couple different sizes so this is just a basic squared off brush that I can use either to get the whole base coat down or what have you this one is also basically like a smaller version of this I did snip it a little bit at the ends to make a point obviously remember that guys when you are using your brushes always try to trim them up when you are using them so if there's any flyaways or any kind of you know little little pokes out trim them with scissors or something so that you have a nice clean brush because it does tend to happen so again i have this small squared off one i like to use this one mainly for certain things and then i also have a round tip brush which is a rather small one i think this is the only 
It's like a size three. It's very small. And then I have these old brushes by the Zhu Ting that I have used in the past. They usually come like something like this, where I was using them for swooshes. And the smallest ones that I had, I basically trimmed them down, geez, to practically nothing, okay? They're very, very, let's see if I can zoom in so you can even see what I'm talking about. So they barely have any bristles to them. And when I get them wet, they can leave this very fine tip to them. So I, and all I did was just take the outer portions and with like a toenail clipper like this, I can just snip away at the edges of my uh, paintbrush. And then I have a nice thin one and I can shape it the way I want. So this one's perfect for making like these nice fine lines of these leaves. That's what I like to use these for, all right? So if you have something already that's more, uh, you know, detailed by all means, you can uh, use that. But uh, I find just making my own out of some old brushes works the best. So you're gonna need a series of brushes like this that are super small. And then the paints we're going to use. So I do like to have a little cup of water just for my paintbrushes and my tray. I do like to actually use a little bit of water for if I need to dilute some paints as well. I've never had problems with water and it's only because I know how to do the right ratio. So don't be afraid of using a little bit of water, guys. I, I promise you that you're not gonna have cracks in them if you're doing it right. So, and we're not really dotting that much today either. So keep that in mind. So let's see, for the base of the plants itself, for the leaves, I'm going to use the Decor Americana brand paint. I'm going to use the color Avocado for the darker green. And then for the lighter green, I'm gonna use the Celery Green. So those are my two colors I will be using for these pretty delicate leaves and whatnot. And then for the berries, so these kind of little, little guys here that are all around, I'm going to use the traditional burnt sienna for that. So it's just a nice dark brown. For most of my flower petals here that you see. I'm going to use the buttermilk color, which is like a nice light cream color. The the basis, oh, and then using for these flowers as well, because some of them I'm switching up the colors. I used, basically, this is the base of it, is the coral cloud. And in the inner part, I use the coral blush. If you don't have these, you can use something different, obviously, okay? Um, I just like the colors with this color in particular. I think they look really nice. So let's see if we can zoom in a bit so we're showing. Sorry, guys, it's really hard to zoom in sometimes and see it. So the base of these, so the red one, for this color in particular, I used Santa Red. Okay, so that's that nice deep red that you see here. I used for these orange ones, I used the burnt orange. And then for the yellow, I used the deep okra, okay? And I will probably do one more series. I only just started them. So I have this like nice rich brownish color as well, whoops. So I feel like those are gonna look good with that as well. I just didn't finish them. This color I was using was cinnamon stick, okay? It's a really nice, rich, like orangey brown color. So I'll put those aside. So we'll put these aside and then let's get out the types of mushrooms we're going to need, the blank ones, all right? So let's see, maybe we'll start with our reds today. Okay, and then we'll go into the other colors as well. So for this one, you're gonna wanna, let me show you the actual different color, 
like sizes if you get this bag in particular just so you're aware of what they all look like okay because I don't want us to get confused I think I have them all yeah okay. so I was right there are five different sizes so you have obviously this nice mid-size one it's much skinnier in size and then you have a larger more plump looking one so those are the two with this shape on the top and you also have a little baby one so this tiny tiny one so the big large plump one is going to be for your yellow and then the skinny one is going to be we're going to do one for the orange and we're also going to do one for the red as well let's get one out and then there we go and then there's also this tall skinny looking guy that has the rounded top to it so it looks like that so we're going to use that one and then there's a tiny little plump one as well so that one's going to go with the yellow and then the other one i had was also a, a taller skinny one i want to see if i actually have that if i don't i can just do the small which it looks like to me, I think I have one more left. So that will be for orange as well. Let's put these away. Now we can get these out. So we can get out our Santa Red first. And we're going to put some in our tray. We don't need much of this, guys, because these are really small. So don't waste your paint. Put a tiny little bit in. If you need to add to it, then by all means do that. So let's see. So I'm just going to hold the base of it like so. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to dip my paint, my paintbrush in my paint. And I'm going to tap off some of the excess. I don't want a big glob of it. I just want a little bit. So I like to do that. And where the base of this is right here this is going to be like a cream color as well so i'm not going to paint the undercarriage part of this i'm just going to go up to where the line is that meets the two sides so like let's see where that line is right there so if i do a little bit of painting like so and I start it like that. You're going to need to do probably a few coats of this as well. So we're just going to... Now I'm using that smaller, smaller brush because if I did use a bigger one, I might have some issues with trying to get a nice straight line especially. Or there might be too much paint on there so carefully and that's why I like to use a square brush because you can get that nice tapered line there so real quick we're just going to paint the top of Just like that perfect see so then we can put that one down let it dry we're gonna have to come back to it obviously and you know paint a second coat on it so we'll move on to this one for now and we're just gonna paint this guy as well and just try to you know go in one direction don't be going up and around just go with the flow of the roundness of it. So go in like one direction like this. And try to get all that paint evenly distributed onto there. You don't want to have any lines 
of paint. This paint goes a long way, trust me. Okay, so we can let that dry. This is almost dry already. See how quick it dries. So you can see it's kind of blotchy in certain areas you could see underneath. So we want to get rid of that. So we want to do a nice, even if it takes three coats, guys, that's okay. Let's, let's just keep going. There we go. And then we can go back to this one now. And we can paint the second coat. And it looks like the second coat might be the winner for this. I don't think we'll need to do a third coat. It's, it's fun to do like painting like this and switch up from just doing your normal dotting all the time. I love dotting, but sometimes I just get in a, in a funk of not knowing what kind of dotting to do. And so I like to do different kinds of painting. I love doing landscapes. I love even just getting myself outside if it's not too cold and or too rainy. And I love to just, you know, paint a sunset if I could. That's good. So there we go. They look really good now. So let's zoom out a little bit here. Okay. So we got our red tops. We'll do our we'll do our painting bases first and then we'll go back through and do all of the other ones. So our next color guys we're going to do is our burnt orange. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in on my tray. Again, I'm just going to be painting the base coats first and then we'll go back through. So I'll try to speed this up a little bit with my video. So what I'm going to do also is get my deep okra color and I'm going to paint the caps on the yellows as well. So we'll start with this one and we'll do the, the tops of these, the orange color. Remember to leave this open because we're going to do that with our cream color, all right? Because the bottoms of mushrooms are usually a lighter tone. So we'll do these. And I'll probably try to speed it up with a little bit of a time lapse and then we'll meet back here and we'll start with the next portion of this video. Okay guys, so we're back. So I finished the tops of my three different colors here and they are already dry, so that's great. The yellow might be a little bit wet, but it's probably almost dry to the touch, definitely is. So, so we got all of our colors here. Now we wanna focus on doing the bottom portion of here and if we want to do the stem as well. If you noticed, the orange and red ones, I left this natural wood color. However, for the yellow, I did do this portion of the cream color. So I'm gonna leave that up to your discretion whether you want to paint the stem or not do it. I personally like I like both, so I think I'm just going to do a few of them with the colors. So what we want to do is get out our buttermilk first. And with the buttermilk, I'm going to also get 
This is not a color that I said in the beginning, so I apologize, but if you do have the color Portobello on hand, that color would look good as far as the base of it. Because if you realize, you know, when you're looking at the under portion of the mushroom, it does have like lines, right, that go out. And it's really just the matter of that darkness, the, the shadows and that dark parts. So to get that illusion, we want to do the light base first and then go in and do some little tapered lines with our thin brushes just to make some darker lines. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm using Portobello. If you don't have Portobello, you can try something either on the brown hues or you could do the grays as well. I like Portobello because it's in between both. It kind of reminds me of like an elephant gray color. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get my small flat square brush you can also try your hand at doing the brown brush if you want because this is a little tricky. In fact, I am going to use the round brush for some of these. We'll try the round brush first and see if we like it. I'm not diluting this paint at all, if you notice. So I'm just going to start and I'm just going to go in at the base of where the underneath part and the stem meet. So I want to do the inner portion first. I think some of these bristles need to be trimmed as well on this brush. So I'm liberally tr applying a lot of this buttermilk paint because it is seeping in and I want it to be nicely coated. I don't want to have to give this a second coat. And then I just work my way out at an angle, like so. And I'm really just lightly brushing over the edge of that line there to get just the bottom half. Just do this very slowly and you'll get it on the first try. So there is our bottom portion. Now we're going to go over this, but we are going to do a few lines first. So get out your small detailed brush that you have. I like to add a little bit of water just to wet it and make it nice and defined. I'm going to dip a tiny bit into my elephant gray and I like to mix on top of the tray like so. And then I'm just going to do some little wispy lines. So I'm starting from the inside and working my way out. They don't have to look perfect because we're going to go over them. We're not going to leave them like this unless you prefer to leave them like this. By all means, you can. I feel like it's a little too cartoony for me though. So I'm done with that. I'm going to clean off that brush. And then I'm going to go back in with my buttermilk again. And then very lightly and gently, I'm going to go over those lines so that they look very faint. So I'm just painting over those lines I had, but they are shining through. And that is what I want. Even so, if you didn't like this, you can kind of dip into your buttermilk like so paint a little section of it and then dip into your portobello a little bit as well and then start pulling that out and you can see that the two colors will start to mix well okay and that's what we want And there we go. So if you can see, oh, I know it's so hard to see a little bit here. So maybe we can darken this a little bit too. Let's see. 
So you can see it's it's a little bit, it's very faint, but there are some darker lines going around like so. And I like it that way. I think it looks good. So that's one of them that I did. Now I want to do that for the rest of them. Unfortunately, I know this is a little tedious, but once we get those done, we can do those nice details on the top portion of our mushrooms. So let's do that, the, the painting for the rest of these mushrooms. And then we'll move on to the next step. Welcome back. So I finished doing all of the bottoms right here. I did not do any of the stems just yet. I think just for this purpose, I'll leave these two out and do them the same as this. And then these will just do wooden and I might even add these in. So we finished the bottoms. We did the caps. Now we can start doing our details. So we can start incorporating the leaves and the flowers. Let's start with the flowers because those are the easiest things to do and I like to work around that. So with other when, any other color that you want to try, I'm going to just stick with my red first. All right. And uh, what you're want to going to do is get out your number, I believe it's your number four stylus. If you don't have that, get a number four dotting tool. You can also use the happy dotting. They have the larger and the smaller end. That might work well for you. I'm going to use my purple and it's going to be like the next size down from the largest one. The largest one being a five and it's, it's pretty large. So I would say a number four or three in between there somewhere. And then the other side I like to use for the center, which is a little bit smaller and it's a number two. So we're going to get our buttermilk. I'm going to add a little bit to my tray. Remember, I'm not going to dilute this paint at all. I don't feel like it's necessary. And then I'm going to get a little bit of my coral blush as well. And a little bit of my coral cloud. And maybe we'll do some, yeah, we'll do some traditional burnt sienna as well because we like to do the berries with that color. So get all these colors prepared first, guys. And then, like I said, see, I'm just doing a tiny, tiny bit. It's not much. I'm also going to do my avocado and I'm going to do a little bit of my celery green. I always do a little bit versus a lot and the reasoning for that is because you know your paints can get very expensive and you're wasting them if you do a big glob of it you probably find that you're not using as much as you think you need and for this project you don't need a lot at all because they're so tiny so we're gonna go with the larger tip we're gonna go into our buttermilk and we're gonna flip and we're gonna go into our number two now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dot in some random. So I'm going to start one at the bottom. Don't go too close to the bottom. You want to go a little bit up. So I did one on the bottom and then I'm going to turn a little bit and I'm going to do maybe one in the center. This is really just random. So wherever you want, I like to space them apart and look and see where I'm going with these. I think that's good enough. And now I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the large one. So now I'm going to dot right in the outside. I didn't have a lot on there. There we go. And close, but have a little bit of space in between like so. I think usually I can get about five petals. Just space them so that you don't have any negative space in between them. So it should look something like that. And then we'll turn it and we'll do the same thing. So one, two. Remember acrylic paint is very forgiving. So if you do mess up, try to wipe off as much as you can and then just repaint it with red, right? We don't need to, you know, start all over when we mess up. I 
All right, and then we'll do the last one. So, last one right here. Now, if you just want to do dots and make like little caps, like with the the red and white, that would be cute too. You know, you can get creative with these, obviously. I like to do the flowers for these, and I'm doing a whole series of them, so. So there we go. So there's our flower, see? Very quick, very simple project, and it's incorporating the dotting, which is awesome, right? So we'll do this one too. I'm gonna clean off my dotting tool because the paint can get sticky and, and then you'll get gloppy paint. So let's just clean these off real quick. And then I'm going back in with my number two. And now I'll do the round one. So one, two, I think I usually get about four or five flowers out of these. Three, four, and I just randomly put them, I'll do down here, five. And I can flip it over. I just get enough paint so that it's covering the ball tip there too. I don't go all the way up. You don't want a lot, lot because they'll, they will run together. So two. Remember, we'll try to do five petals. Three. I think the best way to do five petals is to start at the top of your dot here, like so. And then do one in a little bit around like three o'clock. And then we do like six o'clock. Right, see? And like 10 o'clock and 8 o'clock. Like that. And that's the best way, I think, to do five. And again, I don't really want them touching the center of my dot there, the center of the flower, because I don't want them to run into each other. And then once these dry, we're gonna do a top dot for the center of the petal to give it some color pop. So there we go. So there are our flowers. We're all done with those. These you guys can do on your own. I'm, I'll do those on my own as well. I like to stay consistent with, with a design, so I'm going to do them all the same. And then they'll all be strung up together, I think. That's what I'm going to do. Or you could sell them individually. Or whatever it is that you want to do. Give them away. So we finished the petals. All right. So now we can get our small detail brush out. So this is the tiny one that I I shaped and I clipped a lot of the, the end pieces. So it's super, super thin. If I, I like to do a little bit of a squirt of fresh water in the dish as well and dip it in to wet it first so that it's got a nice fine tip. You can see it's very pointy. There's barely anything on that tip. And then with that, I'm gonna dip it into my avocado, which is the darker green. And on the side of the dish, I'm just gonna wipe it. So I just want a little bit on, on my paintbrush. Not a lot. It's not a lot at all. And I'm gonna go into this. And now, so this is how we do this. It's kind of like doing swooshes a little bit. However, you're, you're having more control over this. So this might help you, or it might be a little bit more frustrating. It is very detailed, so you have to be very slow and gentle with this one. So what I like to do is I just start somewhere underneath the bottom and imagine that there are stems coming up. And stems like to curl. They're not perfectly straight. So I'm going to take my brush 
and very gently kind of curve it down so that it gets to the bottom like that. And then I'm going to take my brush with the, the pointy part at the stem base and I'm going to apply some pressure and then I'm going to curl it up and then flick it off like that. That's the same concept you do with your swooshes. You push pressure down, pull up and flick out. So we're going to do the same thing kind of just making small little leaves. And then this side I'm going to do the same thing. And they don't have to be perfect. I think when they don't look perfect they look way better. So you want it to be a little bit larger and fatter at the base and then taper out and be thin. And I like to just do two of them like that. Sometimes at the where the flower base is you could do like two little swoops. So I go one, two, like that. I just pull them together. You could do one, just one. And those are just the leaves. So again here because I have this here, I'm going to start on this end. I'm going to curve it around just like that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do a big leaf right here that swoops up. And I'm going to do a leaf that swoops up down here like that. And then while this paint is still wet, it's okay to use the same color because you kind of want it to mix. I'm going to get some of my light highlight. So I'm going to use the celery green. And I'm going to go back in and just lightly go down either the side or the center. And I'm just going to add a little bit like that center line you see that are in leaves because not all leaves are one color. They do have, you know, the veins to them, which is the lifeline to them. So I like to pull and, and even if they, they mix, it looks better when they mix. We're going to do that. So you're going to go back and forth between your colors, really. Oop, boo. Do you see what I just did? I just hit that. That's okay. I can go back over and fix that. Oops, see? So there's a, there's a mistake if you guys did that. <laughs> All you're going to do is just get some white and go right over that, and it'll be fine. Now, the next one. So this one I'm going to take right here and kind of go down like so. And then pressure and then taper out. Same with this side. I know these are super tiny, so they're very hard to work with sometimes. So I know that this project may not be for everybody. I do apologize for that, but you know what? I like to push our boundaries and I like to to do different things. I think it's important and it's fun too. And then we'll do one more. So see, I get like the nice two colors on my paintbrush now. I like to do dip in one and then dip in the other. And then you get these nice swirl effects. So that's really all you're going to need for that guys. So we did the leaves. Now once this dries we can do the bottom base too. So this part, I'll show you one real quick. So all I'm going to want to do is start at the base anywhere, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to push real hard down and then I'm going to go off into one side like so. And then the other side I'm going to start again in the center. Oop, and I'm going to go up and out like that. If you find they're not looking good because you, you, you kind of did what I just did where you moved a little bit, just go back over it. And then I go twice up the center very lightly. So I do two small ones like so. And then if I want to go back in with my lighter color, I can do so. These do take steady hands, so 
if you're having trouble, you can always order bigger mushrooms as well. They do sell much larger ones. So again, it's going to be a little hard to manage when you're holding it. So if you want to let it dry, and then I, what I like to do is I like to go a little bit over from there and then I do another one. And if they cross over, that's okay. You're almost kind of creating this chain link of stems. And keep in mind guys that these do not look need to look perfect at all. So so that's that. I'm gonna clean this off. And carefully hold it and put it down. So now a few of them I did a little different. So if you notice like this one I did a little different. I did the same effect up here. However on the sides I didn't go up. I did and I went around. So to do that effect, oops, all you need to do really is you just need to get some green. And if you find that your green gets a little tacky, just dab your paintbrush in some water and then loosen it up. I start from the center and work my way over and I kind of go out like that so it's the same thing except for you going sideways. And then I'll start from that part and go out this way. And then I start from the center, go up, and then I keep going in this round motion. I don't keep the, the line straight so I like to make them look like they're you know, a little squiggly and that helps with making it look realistic. So there we go. So there was one that we did and I only go about halfway around. This one I actually did go pretty far which is fine. These I noticed I did um, one here and then I stopped and then I started the other. Okay this one too. There's actually two of them. So there's one there and I went up and then I started the other one here. It's up to you how you want to do it. And then I'm going to do some light green. The light green guys remember is just an accent so you want tiny little lines. They don't even have to go through the whole thing. I like to go through the thicker parts of the base because that's more of a realistic viewpoint of what stems look like. So I just did one and it went all the way around. <clears throat> and then all I did for the base of this one was I took my number two stylus and I went in with the same color and I just dotted around the base very carefully. So with the orange I did that kind of style. And then I did the same thing with the yellow. So I did the dark burnt sienna for this one because it matches the berries. The berries really stood out with this one. So, so again, let's go back to what we just did with this guy because these are already dry. See, these dry pretty quickly. I can even finish this portion right now and then I'll show you the rest. So. So for these, the, the flowers, what we want to do is get the number two stylus and I'm going to go in with my coral blush, which is the darker peachy tone. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do for a top dot is I'm just going to dot this part, not centered, but more towards the inner portion. So it's going to look a little staggered. This is kind of the same technique that we were doing when we did our peacock coasters. If you did that project with me, we did them staggered a little bit. So they're on the inner portion. And I'm just doing a quick tiny little dot on the inside. I don't really mess with the center part of my petal of my flower. I like to just leave it white. It's very basic, but I like it like that. So that's how you'll do your flower guys. So if you do the other one, this is the one where I messed up, but you know what, I don't care, it's okay. 
There we go. I might even get a little brush and pull that out and it'll look like a leaf. And you can switch up these colors. So if you don't want to use these kinds of colors and you want to use something different, by all means, go right ahead. I mean, any kind of flower you want to do is it's up to you. I like these tones and these colors for this project in particular. So I think even with this one, the rounded one, I did the the traditional burnt sienna with this one. So I did right here and I did the center like that with a darker tone. And I went all the way around with these. And while I'm at with this, while I'm with the burnt sienna, I wanna show you the berries that I do too. So, so this one I did the darker tone. Like I said, you can do any color you want really. It's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is going to get my brush out again and <clears throat> I'm going to get this one out. I'm going to get a tiny little bit of the burnt sienna on my brush. And now with this one, anywhere where there's like negative space, so I have a nice amount of space right here, I'm going to pull from the center part of my flower like behind the petal as if it's coming out. A tiny little line. It might be hard to see that. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if we can zoom in. So I did a tiny little line right there coming out. And then I'll do another one maybe right here. And we'll do one maybe right here. And you can go over, you can overlap your, your leaves, absolutely. I think it gives it more depth. And like I said, this is really just a random kind of style of painting. You're not really following anything to 100%. I'm just kind of doing some random lines. So that's done. i rinse this off and I'll get my number two size dotting tool out and just very lightly getting enough on the tip. And what I do is at the base where that line came and ended, I'm going to do a dot on one side of the line and another on the other side and then one in the front. And you got these three little cute berries. All right. So then I'm going to do it over here. One, two, three. You should have enough paint to just do all three in one shot. Now you could add some highlight to this if you really wanted to. I'm going to leave them as is. But they are super cute and I love the style of what this is. So there we go. So I only did a few. So there's our berries and they're all finished. And then I think they really show dominant when it's a lighter color. So if you could see like the yellow, the berries came out really nice. I did a lot more on this yellow. In fact, I didn't even do the lighter green if you notice. I just kept it basic, which I might go through. So, like I said, change up the colors, change up the style if you want. It's up to you what you want to do. This one I did the coral. So this one on the orange, I did the lighter coral color. So I did the coral cloud on this part. And then I did the coral blush on the inside. And then the very center, I did the buttermilk. So again, this is just showing you the difference of what you can do for your styling of your mushrooms. <clears throat> and then the base is those little lines that we did. 
On the bottom of these I also did some dotting so I did just like a circle pattern. You can get creative with that too. I found it was a little hard to keep them standing once I painted the base though so keep that in mind guys. I didn't do that for all of them. I don't think I did these. See I kept them basic. You can also initial the bottom of them too as an artist you know. So, so that's the style guys. That's what we did for all of these. Some of them I said I did the base of them with these rows of dots. You can do that as well if you want to do all of them. You can even just do a series of dots around this portion and not do the flowers. I just wanted to introduce these really cute mushrooms though to you guys because they're so sweet and so like tiny and cute and I think a lot of people would like them. So that's done for the painting portion. I think I showed you the whole basis of them and I feel like you could probably do this yourself for the rest of the portion of it. The last thing I want to show you is these little tiny eye hooks. I'm using this darker tone eye hook for these in particular these projects and really all you need to do I do like to use a, a set of tiny little jewelry pliers for myself is <clears throat> I kind of take this I'm sorry I'm losing my voice hang on I'm gonna get a cup of coffee real quick so I like to just hold it like this in there <clears throat> and these really do go in quite easily sometimes you're gonna want to start a dot so I like to use my marble tool and I kind of just make a, a little divot in the top so that it kind of shows let's see let's see if I can show you real quick it makes a little divot like that and then I go in with my little tool I use and I make a little bit of a hole so I don't think I can plug it in over here unfortunately where I'm sitting but the tool I have will just it's like a little dremel and it can go in if you don't have that don't worry about it if you at least make like a little bit of a divot even if you use a tack or something <clears throat> you can punch in the tack just to make a little hole and then with this, you're going to want to snugly hold it like so. And then you want to just kind of start turning it, even if you hold it with your hand. My nails kind of get in the way sometimes when I do this project. But you want to just start turning it like so into the mushroom top. And then it will go through. I promise it will. It just takes some elbow grease to do that. <clears throat> but these are great and they're super cute. So when you're finished, you have this tiny little hook here. So you can put a string through it. My plan for these are going to be a string and they're going to be all in like a garland shape so they can hang. And I'm going to do different. I think that's my best thing I'm going to do for these. So. I think that's it for this project guys. I want to keep this video a little simple for you and not overwhelm you. So if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and I hope you enjoyed this project. I like to incorporate more painting techniques into our projects as well instead of just dotting. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next project. Happy dotting and take care. Bye guys.